Hello and welcome to this second part of All About Light tutorial series. In the second part, I want to show you a technique on how I learned the lighting principles and how I improved my lighting skills. And it, with this technique, I want to show you how you can improve your lighting skills. Okay. So in this example, we have a simple scene, just a photo wall and an object. And the important part is that the object and the photo wall has the same color. In this case, it's just white. Now the exercise is how we can separate the object from the background, which has the same color. And we will do that with light. One of the best methods to separate a object from the background is to using the principle of the three point lighting. Okay. So the three point lighting is a light setup that is commonly used in photography and product photography, also for portrait and human photography, because the three point lighting allows you to separate an object from the background very easily so you have three types of light you have the fill light you have the main light and you have the rim light the rim light is that light that separates the object from the background the best so now we have to set up this light situation so let's get started all right so what i do is i'm going to switch to the top view here so what we have to do now is I change this light type, okay, from distance to spot. To have more control where this light pointing on my object is I create an item null and I call this target. Select the light, press the M key for motion properties and change the target item to our new target. So now wherever I move the light, it's pointing always to my chair. Okay. So what I do is I set the rim light. So typically the rim light is behind an object. Okay. And I have to move the target up so it's in the middle of the chair and now i move the rim light proper position so as you can see here it's hard to see what's actually going on so you can go to the scene editor open up the dope sheet and we turn off the global illumination and here is our rim light so what I do is I go to the properties of the rim light and I turn off the objects contribution. So I turn off the photo wall. So now the rim light only affects the chair. Okay. And as you can see now, you see it's much more clear where the light touching the object. So what I'm looking at here is I want to have a separation from the background. You can see here, this corner there, it's nice separated now. And as you can see this fine white line on the top of the chair, this is a very important line to separate this top part from the background later on. And all these parts there see a very nice rim light. Okay. Yeah, something like that. I like that. So you can see really clear these highlights just on the side and slightly on the top here of the chair. Okay, so we renamed this light rim light. And let's see, let's crank the intensity up to 10. Okay. Next, we need another light. So we need the fill light. So we go to item lights and create 
an array light. This time we have an array light because we want to set up a kind of a soft box situation. Okay, so we call this fill light. Fill light. Okay, and the same thing here. Press M for motion properties. Target item is our target. So now wherever I move this light, it's pointing always to my object. So to see clear what the light is doing, I turn off the rim light. So I have only the contribution of the fill light now. And I move the light like so. So as you can see now, they, the fill light fills up this gap there, this corner there, and this side of the chair, right? So this gives a nice depth feeling. So this position of the of the fill light is pretty good as it is. Okay, perfect. And now we need a last light. So we come up here again, item light and create another soft box and we call this main light and again press the m key select the target and as you can see wherever i move the light now it's pointing to my object which is exactly what i want and then here again into the Adobe sheet, turn off the fill light. And now we can see only the contribution of the main light. So what I want to have here is, I just want to highlight a bit the front of the chair and that parts here underneath that are in the dark, right? So just to fill up this gap. All right, so now when we turn on all the lights on again, we can see that we have a very nice separation between the background and the foreground. So now here comes a really, really good tip. Sometimes it's hard to tell where which light touching your object. And a good trick to visualize what's actually happened in your object is to colorize your lights, okay? And I want to show you that real quick. So here in the main light, I use a blue color for the rim light, I use a red color. And for the fill light, I use a green color. So here you can see clearly visual which light has an influence of your object, okay? So go back into the dope sheet and uh, just turn off the lights so we can see what's actually going on. So here is our rim light. So you can see the effect of the rim light, only of the rim light. And we can change the, turn on the main light. As you can see, the effect of the main light here. And the fill light just fills up that part of the chair. So this is a very good tip to visualize clear which light has how much influence of the object. So just a quick note and a quick tip. So now what I typically do is I bring back the final colors that I want for the lights. So for the fill light, I typically use a slightly bluish tinted color. Okay, and for the main light, I choose a slightly tinted warm color. 
and for the rim light I use the same color as the fill light and you can see now we have a very very nice separations from the background and the foreground by using the three point lighting so now we have this separation okay and the last step actually is I prepared already the materials for the chair so we jump right into the note graph and as you can see here I have my diffuse color the glossiness map reflection map and normal map so everything is set it up in a principled BSDF material and that goes into a surface so all the maps are corresponding to a UV map which comes on with this chair and what's important about texturing is if we go to the image editor you can see that all the color maps is set to the color space as RGB and all the other maps glossiness normal and reflection map and displacement map so all maps that has no color information in it including the normal maps has to be set to linear and linear HDRIs if you use an HDRI map is set to linear as well so this is just an important part so now what we do is just go to right click copy and paste and voila we have our chair perfectly lit and separated from the background so the last step what I do to mimic a photo studio is I add to the photo wall in the surface editor this luminous effect okay and I'm not going to 100% it's too bright so but I use a value between 30 and 40 percent because if you look in the photo walls in the real world they reflect lights all right so that's basically it okay so we have a three-point lighting we have learned how to separate an object from the background at the end we textured the model and we set it up the photo wall and that's basically it so I hope this tutorial the second part tutorial is helpful for you you have found some tips and tricks that you can use for your own projects so feel free to leave a comment and as always please like comment and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See you next time and bye everyone.